Good afternoon and welcome if you're watching from afar. We've got a keen audience here at St Mary's Perivale for our monthly jazz concert. And uh, this is a huge treat for us. We usually stick to classical stuff all the time, but we're gradually loosening up and widening our approach and having jazz events. And they've been hugely successful. And this afternoon's will be so again. It's given by the Shirley Smart Jazz Trio, full details on the website, and uh, you'll, they're going to introduce what they're playing. So I'm going to ask the audience here to put their hands together and welcome our trio.
Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for coming out um, and joining us in this wonderful, wonderful little place. What a, a beautiful discovery this is for all of us today. Um, and thank you for, for taking Hugh's advice on board and making lots of noise. Welcome to everyone listening um, online as well. Hello. Um, yeah, we've just played, um, the first piece we've just played is a composition of mine. Um, it's a tune called Waltz for an Amethyst. Um, and it was inspired a little bit by a wonderful French accordion player that I'm a great fan of, a guy called Richard Galliano, if anyone is, is familiar with his work and his playing. Um, but I, I love his stuff, and this, this piece was a little bit inspired by his style. Um, most of the pieces we're going to play this afternoon are compositions of my own or arrangements of some traditional material, some stories about which I shall tell as we go along. Um, there's a slight Middle Eastern influence which will come in also. Um, and again, I'll, I'll tell a little bit of a story about that as we go along. Um, before we play our second piece, I would like just to introduce and welcome also my friends and colleagues here today, John Crawford on the piano. and Demi Garcia Sabat on the drums. Um, yeah, the next piece we're going to play um, goes to the aforementioned Middle Eastern influences. This is a tune by a wonderful Tunisian oud player called Anwar Brahim. I don't know if anyone is familiar with his work as well. He, he plays an instrument called the oud, um, which is it's basically the forerunner of the European lute. It's an incredibly beautiful instrument used right the way across the Middle East. Um, and I have a lot of Middle Eastern influences in my work and in my playing because I lived in Jerusalem for quite a long time. So I kind of picked them up by osmosis when I was there. Um, and this is a particularly beautiful tune of Anwar Brahim's called Half a Wine about the town where he grew up in Tunisia.
Sorry, wrong button. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was Haufa Wine by Anwar Brahim. Uh, we shall revisit the Middle East and North Africa a little bit later. Um, the next two tunes bring us a bit more back into the European orbit. Um, these are, again, two compositions of mine. First is a tune called Mobius Blues. I should perhaps say also that this tune featured Demi's wonderful Udu drum there. This is a really beautiful instrument, so it's just nice to give it its own little introduction. <laughs>
Thank you. It's Mobius Blues. Um, we're going to continue with another tune of mine called Opals. Um, this tune was actually inspired by a ring that my grandmother gave to me. Um, and I was sitting one day wearing it and the sun was, I was sitting on a windowsill and the sun was kind of catching it. And you know how the light in opals sort of reflects and it just really caught me that day. So this tune was a little bit inspired by the ring that my grandmother gave me.
thank you. Those opals. Um, the next tune we're going to play is a, a distinct change of vibe. We're going back into the, the Middle East for the next couple of tunes. Um, this tune is a tune called Lunga Kismet. Um, it's actually written by a very, very good friend of ours called Peter, who lives in Golders Green. Uh, it's not remotely Turkish, but it's, it's written very much in a Turkish style and drawing on a, a very old tradition of Turkish and Arabic composition. Um, so the lunga is basically, it's kind of a Western rondo. It was, it was um, a, a genre of composition that was very popular with Turkish and Arabic composers around the turn of the 19th, 20th century and into the 20s and 30s. And it was very much derived from the Western rondo, um, the influence of, of classical composition on those composers. So it sort of follows that form, but it uses um, a, a Turkish rhythm that Peter has kind of adapted a bit and Arabic and Turkish scales. Um, and this is the lunga, apparently kismet is the Turkish word for fate. So this is the lunga or the rondo of fate. Make of that what you will.
Demi Garcia drunk Sabat on drums. And Mr. John Crawford on the piano. Thank you. Um, I don't know what that says about the fate that is in store for us, but <laughs> there it is. Um, the next tune we're going to play is another one of mine. This is a tune called Crossfire, um, and is a little bit of a testament to a few years spent living on the Israeli-Palestinian border. <laughs> More about that later.
Thank you. Um, we will move to a lighter mood now. Um, this is a tune called Sambuka. Um, 
One of the people, things people very often ask me um, is how did I get into jazz on the cello? Um, and, and why would you try and do that as, anyway? Um, basically, the answer is that I just heard it in the, when I was at the Guildhall School of Music while I, according to one BBC presenter, fell off the rails. Um, <laughs> if someone had told me there were any, I'd have, I would have known that I'd fallen off them, wouldn't I? Um, but anyway... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I was basically, I kept being curious about what are these noises coming out of the basement? Like, that's really amazing. I want to go and do that. And they would never let me do it. So, the, you know, the natural thing to do was to clear off and live in the Middle East for 10 years, which is what I did, slightly by accident. Um, another story of that in a minute. Um, but, but, yeah, basically it was just a music. I just loved the sound. And I thought, why would you not try and do that? On, on the, There's a long history of jazz violin. It goes right back to the beginning of, of jazz. And cello has been there less so, but it has been there right since the beginning. It just seemed a bit of a shame to me not to explore it. Um, and also, I think that one can't really call oneself a jazz musician if one doesn't pay homage occasionally to Charlie Parker. Um, so... This is a tune that I wrote called Orinoco Lane, which is um, kind of a homage to Charlie Parker and also a homage to the lack of wombles on Wimbledon, Wimbledon Common. Um, it was, I was basically, I was living in Wimbledon when I, I wrote it, and I was, I was very gutted to find that there were no wombles on the common, but what there was behind the station is this little lane called Orinoco Lane, full of dustbins, and I thought, well, that's a kind of nice consolation prize, because one of the wombles was called Orinoco so it was my way of getting around it. So this is basically my little homage to Charlie Parker.
Thank you. We're going to conclude with two more tunes of a more North African vibe. Um, the first is a tune of mine called Tetuan. Um, this is dedicated to a very, very beautiful little town on the northern coast of Morocco. Um, I happened to be there once on a tour with one of the groups that I played with in Jerusalem. Um, and it's just a really lovely t t um, town. So this tune is dedicated to that. It actually also has the only functioning tennis court in Morocco, so I was told. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's kind of a nice story. Um, and the final tune is actually a t um, traditional Algerian tune. Um, and I will tell you the story of that tune in a second. But first, we'll play Tetouan.
Debbie Garcia Sabat on the drums. And Mr. John Crawford on the piano. Let's give these guys a big hand. Thank you. Um, before we play our last piece as well, I would just like to say a massive thanks to Hugh for keeping this whole series going for so long. I understand it's been going ages, and so what a, a wonderful place to find. And also to Rob for doing the sound so beautifully. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, and to everyone that obviously helps out, keeps the, keeps the series going. So let's give them a big hand as well, please. Especially now he's shown us how to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to conclude with um, a piece called Tishiraka Tashub. I have absolutely no clue what this title means. I've, I'm actually trying to find out for my PhD research, and I still can't find out, so I've given up. Um, but this was originally a piece of, from similar to Tetuan. It was um, influenced by um, a repertoire known as Shabi, which is basically Algerian kind of popular music because it grew up around the 20s and 30s again. Similar, if anyone's familiar with Brazilian Choro, you know, anyone know Choro music? It's kind of the Algerian equivalent, or if anyone's seen the, the Buena Vista Social Club, uh, yeah, many people have seen that. It's actually a really, really beautiful video, a uh, film in a similar vein to the Buena Vista about the Algerian equivalent called El Gusto. It's a really lovely film, and it's about this p particular kind of folk music called Shabi. Um, and this piece, I think, was is originally a combination of that and something slightly older. Um, but a lot of um, my music also draws on that because basically when I was doing what became my last ever classical um, thing, it was playing Schubert string trios in a Russian mafia-led bar in Jerusalem, <laughs> um, as one does <laughs> every now and then. Um, and in the break, there was this very dubious looking character lurking at the back, and in the break he came and asked me if I'd be interested in playing some Moroccan jazz. Um, and me having no clue what that was or what that meant, sort of said, yeah, all right. Um, and basically, I kind of loitered off with him after the gig and went and met the band that he had, which turned out to be a really good idea because it was a great band. There were some very, very fine musicians in it. And they were basically learning all of this music from, um, I think, probably maybe one of the last living at, um, exponents of this music, um, living in Jerusalem, a guy called Nino Beaton. Um, and we, we all learned it from him, so it was a really, really great experience. Um, but basically, that's sort of how my involvement with Middle Eastern music started, but just by this totally chance encounter um, in the bar. And a lot of them were very, very fine jazz musicians as well, so that kind of helped me develop what I hadn't managed to do at the Guildhall, but I think it was maybe a better <laughs> way of doing it, actually. Um, but anyway, that's kind of how all this started. Um, and this was the first piece that they... I, I was going to say they taught me, but they didn't really teach me. They just kind of chucked me into the rehearsal and kept playing it and said, you know, you'll pick it up as you go along. <laughs> and eventually I did, but that was very much the way of learning. Was there was no sheet music or anything. You just kind of, they would just play it and you just had to kind of work it out as you went along. Uh, but it's a really fun piece to play and it, it's come back to, to London with me as many pieces have and many musicians have played it with me in different versions. Um, and it's just a really, really beautiful piece. It's a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it's beautiful, but it's a lot of fun. So I would like to conclude um, this afternoon's concert with Tisha Raka Tashub. Um, if you would like to take any of our music home, we do have a few CDs at the back. We recorded an album a few years ago called Long Story Short, which has most of the pieces on here, um, and some very special guests as well. We have Nikki Isles on the um, accordion, and um, Orphie Robinson joined us on the vibraphone, if anyone's come across Orphie. And Nicholas Meyer, who's a wonderful guitarist, also joined us on that album. And of course, Demi Garcia Sabat and John Crawford were also on it. Um, so, yeah, we'd like to finish this, this afternoon with Tisha Raka to shoot.
everyone watching on the live stream as well. Please do tune in again and support this, this wonderful series. We will end with a tune that hopefully many people will know. In C. <laughs> Just to confirm. Did I say it? It's on F one C.
Well, I think your applause says it all. It was a fabulous afternoon's music. Three fabulous musicians, each superb. And I love the Middle Eastern tone to a lot of it and all the variety. It was a great afternoon's music. Thank you very much for watching from afar. Uh, you can watch it again if you enjoyed it as much as I did. It's a terrific afternoon. And if you really did enjoy it, what you need to do is go to our PayPal facility because it's an expensive afternoon for us. Please support our concerts. Go to the PayPal facility on our website and donate something to support these wonderful musicians. Thank you very much for being with us. I should say that the uh, recording engineer today is Simon Shute, who installed all this wonderful equipment. And the sound engineer was Rob Jenkins. Very grateful to both of them. Thank you very much for being with us in West London this afternoon, and a very good afternoon to you. Mm -hmm.